Well, church, so good to be with you today. We're into the last part of Colossians. In fact, this is the next to last lesson we have as we finish up this letter from Paul. Uh, but before we get to that, a couple of things. I hope you were able to catch Janice yesterday in part two of our Trading uh, the Truth for Lies series that uh, uh, she did just such a masterful job of preaching the Word of God. And we're so grateful for her and her voice into our church. Secondly, I want to take a moment and thank all those who participated in Backyard Missions as we partnered with House of Hope and their ongoing work to take care of the marginalized in our community. Huge shout out to Pastors Chris and Tamara uh, for their work, as well, again, as the hundreds of volunteers uh, that make that ministry happen and the ripple effect of good that happened in the lives of children and families because of your efforts. We are so blessed as a church. And so uh, I think what God is doing is a beautiful thing, and we want to celebrate that and give him glory. So with that, let's pick up chapter 4, beginning in verse 10. My fellow prisoner Aristarchus sends his greeting, as does Mark, the cousin of Barnabas. You have received instructions about him. If he comes to you, welcome him. Now pause right there. Part of the reason for this is you may remember that Barnabas and Paul had a falling out over Mark. And Mark was less enthusiastic about the work, maybe not as reliable in those days. But whatever has happened, this statement is given to us so that we understand that Mark has been reinstated into the leadership of the church and comes with the full blessing of Paul. Then in verse 11, Jesus, who is, all, is called Justice. Can we tell you that would be tough to follow if your name was Jesus, right? No wonder they called him Justice, right? So also since greetings. These are the only Jews among my co-workers for the kingdom of God, and they have proved a comfort to me. Epaphras, who is one of you and a servant of Christ Jesus, sends his greetings. He is always wrestling in prayer for you, that you may stand firm in, in all the will of God, mature and fully assured. I vouch for him that he is working hard for you, as for those at Laodicea and Herotlis. Our dear friend Luke, the doctor, and Demas send greetings. Give my greetings to the brothers and sisters at Laodicea and to Nympha and the church at her house. Ooh, there's a lot going on here. First of all, I think it's interesting for us to know that uh, Aristocarchus is a uh, fellow prisoner with Paul. But the story behind the story is that he and Epaphras take turns sitting with Paul. So it's one thing to be in jail with Paul. It's another thing to volunteer to go to jail with Paul. Right, so you track him with that. He has volunteered to be there. And so they swap out and switch out, history tells us, as they serve alongside Paul while he is in a miserable prison in horrible, horrible conditions. Uh, so also in this list is a number of people that reminds us that what Paul's trying to say to everybody, hey, the gang's all here. They're all here. We're sending greetings. Think about the power players that are in this list. First of all, Mark, who will be the author of the book of Mark. Luke, who will write Luke and the entire book of Acts is present there. And then you have these players. You have Epaphras, who is well known in his own right. You have to remember that these are not just anybody's. These are significant players in the advancement of the kingdom of God in the first century. Again, I think Paul is just trying to say to the church at Colossae, listen, all the guys are here. Everybody who's passed through your church, everybody you know really well, everybody you've been praying for, they're all here and they send greetings to you. So again, I think it's one thing to uh, to consider yourself a friend. I mean, what does it look like to be a friend? But will a friend go to prison with you? I mean, what kind of level of Jesus does it take for you to go to prison with a friend of yours? Right? I mean, like, what does that look like? I mean, for the love of God, literally for the love of God is the only way you can describe what is happening in this passage as people serve alongside one another. Listen, the, listen. my goal all the time is to comfort the afflicted and to afflict the comfortable. I think this is the goal for me as a pastor, is to come alongside those who are hurting and wounded, but also come alongside those who uh, have been highly resourced and help them leverage their resources for the blessing of others, to make a difference in the life of another, right? So listen, I want to say this. One of the great things about ministry for me personally is who I get to do it with. Whether it's a group of pastors in our denomination or whether it's my accountability group or whether it's uh, honestly the thing I'm going to miss most 
when I retire is getting to work with this amazing staff that we have at Georgiana. So church, I just say to you today that look around you and who are your friends? Who is the person that when you are in the darkest part of your life is willing to come sit in it with you? Not willing to send you a card from afar, but willing to drop what they're doing and come sit in it with you. I think Paul reminds us in this whole concept of the gangs all here is that community is everything. What kind of community are you in? Who's in it for you? Who are you in it for? These are the questions that we ask ourselves as we do life together. Remember, it's all about life together. So I hope this is helpful not to read past this passage, see a bunch of names you can't pronounce and just think it doesn't make a difference. There's a lot going on here, not to mention the fact that the last person mentioned is leading a house church and she's a woman, right? So there we have it. Listen, I love you so much. Can't wait to finish the book of Colossians with you uh, next week. And uh, then we'll be moving on uh, to the book of Jude. That's next on our list. Have a great week, church.